been known to be absolutely <laughs> obsessed with lettuce, and it goes everywhere with me. So <laughs> we'll put that aside for now. But really what we're seeing is that in the world today, the big issues with growing resource consumption, growing populations, are how are we going to feed this growing world? And right now, what we do is we're in the field, we might do a greenhouse or some sort of enclosure, or there may be another way to do it. And so the real question is, is how are we going to do that and why would we want to? So this is the field today. This is where most of the food comes from that we know every day. But what keeps me awake at night is, again, how do we address the issues of growing populations and resource efficiency? The problem with the field is that over half of certain greenhouse gases come from agriculture. Over 70% of our potable water is used for agricultural purposes. And this is the reality in the field. In the field, you have to spray for 95% of the crops that are produced today. Likewise, soil is not a renewable resource, so you have to fertilize. So are there alternatives? Yeah, we have alternatives. We have greenhouses today, so technology is great. You get 10 times the yield out of a greenhouse that you can out of the same square footage of field space. Problem is, you still have pesticides, you still have chemicals involved in the process. So, with that, how are you going to feed the growing population in the city? Today we have six billion people. Half of them live in an urban center. Over the coming decades, we're talking about having nine billion people 80% of which will live in urban centers. We will need to put into agricultural production a land area 20% larger than the country of Brazil to feed this growing population using current technologies. So how are we going to feed the world and what are we going to do? Can we rethink or come up with a better way when we question very basic fundamental principles of do plants need light? Do they need soil? And these are what the results are. Today, the University of Arizona operates in production for the feeding of the crews at the South Pole, this system. This is available today. We can build it. We know how to do this. These types of systems using artificial light and hydroponic technologies can increase yield 50% over greenhouse technologies. And remember, greenhouse technologies are 10 times more efficient than the field. This is what we're seeing in Japan. Weaving into the fabric of the urban center and of the core of the city we can build these types of systems inside a clean room. And we can put produce right where it's going to be purchased and right where it's going to be eaten. In fact, there is a subway in Tokyo that has one of these systems in it for fresh greens right in the city. This also means we can reuse all that vacant office space. We could put those resources into production again and we can weave the connection back to our food inside the city. We can retool those greenhouses to make them more efficient and produce better, more nutritious food, and we can do it with a tenth of the fertilizer. Fertilizer prices have doubled in the last 18 months. We can do it with a tenth. We can also do it with 1% of the water. So we weave all that together, and we weave back into the connection with the food and the connection with the farmer. Pesticide free, you don't need the chemicals on your food. And how great would it be if you could eat a fresh salad, harvested not weeks in advance for the 1,500 mile journey your salad's gonna take today to your plate, but hours 
because you know exactly where it came from, it came from your neighbor. Or what if you could eat a salad that hasn't even technically been harvested yet, that's available to you and fresh and available and tasty, and we know exactly what it's going to do. You could do this with berries as well, and you can know exactly what you're getting in your food, and you can ensure that it's tasty. And so the seed that I would like to plant is, how are we going to grow as a society, and what are we going to do, and can we question the fundamental principles that we think plants need, sunlight and soil, and is there a way to grow more sustainably when we come up with new methods of doing these things? Thank you.